It says, during the early years of independence, which is a time when Lin Yong lost his citizenship, the provision of citizenship became a, main, a means of patronage for the ruling alliance government. It was a further lever used by the alliance on the non-Malay Rakyat. Not only was citizenship difficult to obtain, it could just as easily be taken away. And the alliance was not averse to depriving citizens of this right. In 1963 alone, which is quite close to 1961, 104 Malayan citizens lost that status and were deported from the country of their birth to China. To China, you know, even though they were born here, with which they had no necessary connection. This is not during the emergency. This was after independence in 1963. Even elected representatives could suffer this fate, a feature prevalent for ex-detainees. So even during that time, it's not only people like C.C. Yong who are deprived of their citizenship or their ICs, they have been banished from this country. And this is the kind of civil rights we are talking about today. And it's interesting that during that time, uh, this, 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 this thing goes on, because today is a quite a special day, uh, especially tomorrow is a very special day. A gauge of the authoritarian character of the Alliance government can be seen in the constitutional and legislative changes which they introduced coincide with the official conclusion of the 12-year emergency. The emergency ended in 1960. That means the country is at peace. It is officially declared over. Only the three years after independence, 1961, and less than one year after the ratification of the Constitution, 36 amendments were enacted and important powers were granted or transferred into the hands of the, of the executive, meaning the, the executive of the government. Built-in safeguards against their abuse were removed, and the freedoms enshrined in these articles were effectively negated. Which means that the new constitution in 1957, in those three years, they passed 30 over amendments to amend the constitution so that an important act could be passed, the Internal Security Act which was passed, will be passed. Tomorrow will be the 50th anniversary of the ISA. And so you can see the connection between banishment, taking away of citizenship, and the passing of the Internal Security Act. So this, again, is a question of the relation between civil rights and the ISA and taking away of citizenship. And uh, today, if you read, it's very interesting to read all those uh, documents in there on the validity of citizenship. Because the arguments that are given are the same arguments that we all suffer from. The government was trying to use Article 25, Section 1A of the Constitution, in which anyone guilty of disloyalty or disaffection towards the Federation will have their, can have their citizenship taken away from them. Towards the Federation, remember that. And our lawyers, and the Lim Lin Yok's lawyers, were trying to argue that you criticize the government, that is not criticizing the Federation. The Federation is representing the state of Malaysia, or it's during its time, Malaya. During most of the detainees under the ISA is the same thing. My detention was the same thing. You criticize the new economic policy, therefore you are anti-national. Therefore you threaten national security. And this is the kind of irrationality uh, that we see uh, in this government. Any criticism of the government is tantamount to criticizing the country and the federation. And today, this irrationality still persists. Uh, finally, I would like to ask uh, what we can learn from Lim Lien Gyok. Number one, I have met Lim Lien Gyok when I first joined uh, the Chinese education movement. I was working in Jiangyi uh, in Po. I heard a lot about Lim Lien Gyok when I was researching for my book on uh, uh, the Chinese schools in Malaysia. 
And I, have a, I even have a, a, a cassette tape of an interview with Lin Dae Jong. But at that time, I was very, I was very impressed that such a man who is so respected by the Chinese community could be so humble and living in such a simple life. In, at that time, it was in, in Malawati somewhere. A uh, very simple, uh, single-story house. Uh, and at that time, not many people in the community seemed to be paying a lot of attention to him at that time. But he was a very simple, humble man, living a very sustainable lifestyle. lifestyle. And today, uh, what do we see in today's papers and, uh, and in all the English, Chinese papers, about somebody whose name is so unimportant, and the star has got pages and pages of him, not only the front page, and the group editor goes to interview him as well. Who is this guy? What's he famous for? What has he done for the country? What has he done for anybody? Huh? Young man, what's he famous for? Playing, the, playing around with Paris Hilton. Who is Paris Hilton? Such a person can occupy so many pages in the newspaper. There's something wrong with the, the journalism in this country. The mainstream uh, journalism. So I hope that, uh, and, and, and this is a, a, a kind of uh, a sign of the times. Integrity, perseverance, dignity. Integrity. It's not some, a, a, a quality we see uh, very much now in, in many uh, of our leaders. Uh, and I think reading the book and reading about how it became uh, the KL uh, Chinese School Teachers Association uh, Secretary and then the chairman in, in, in uh, 49 and 51. We see that he's first and foremost a workers' leader, a teachers' leader who believes in association. He was moved because of the, the, the plight of the teachers, Chinese school teachers at the time, how poor they were. I think one or two of his friends had committed suicide because of their, their situation. And today, yes. The Chinese education movement is very concerned about uh, Chinese schools, etc. But how concerned we are, are we about uh, Chinese school teachers? Are we concerned about the, uh, their livelihood, their advancement, etc.? Even I think today the school, United School Teachers Association of Malaysia is led by headmasters now, isn't it? I don't think. It, Ordinary teachers play a very big part in the in, in Chao Chong now, do they? I don't think they do. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the documents in this book again show that he was a true Malaysian who could go to the talk, invited get invited to talk to the Tamil schools associations, get invited to uh, uh, write something in Utusan Malayu, but of course that's something to do with. Uh, uh, politics in this country. So, but at the same time, you can go to other Malay language organizations apart from uh, the AMNO own newspapers to do this. Uh, his love for the mother tongue, I think, I, I hope uh, through this book, people will recognize and learn to have a respect and a love for their mother tongue. Civil rights. You notice that at that time, after independence, every election, even before independence in 1955, the question of civil rights and uh, mother tongue education was always an issue. In every election, even after independence, under the leadership of Lin Fong Seng and Simo Yi, you find that at every election, whether a general election or a by-election, the question of civil rights and mother tongue education is always an issue at, civil, at, at elections. But ever since 1997, since the Su Chu uh, affair, we find that the leaders in the Chinese education movement have suddenly taken on a, what they call a, a, a neutral position at elections. And whatever demands, they don't call demands anymore, they're, they're called appeals now. Uh, to the government are uh, always done to the back very quietly uh, so that the issues do not get blown up in the public. But at the time of Lin Lin Biok, the time of Lin Fong Seng, you find that the demands of the people are 
taken up at every general election, and that's what I hope, that reclaiming Libyan York citizenship will be an issue at the next general election. And I hope that not just adults, but young people will have the same sense of mission that Lim Lien Yong had. Such a man in his old young days, you could see that he had a sense of mission, what he had to do, what he had to write, what he had to say, how he had to live, how to live his life. He always had a sense of mission. A mission that today is accomplished because he is seen as the soul of the Malaysian Chinese. But it's a mission that is not accomplished until the people in this country restore not just the citizenship of Lim Nien Yok, but restore Gardelan, justice, freedom, democracy, and human rights to Malaysia. Thank you.